I just pulled the carbon rods out of a 6 volt lantern battery and used them to complete a makeshift arc reactor furnace, which apparently is powerful enough to completely liquefy steel in under 2 minutes. In this project, let's harness the power of electrified plasma to melt high temperature metals and take backyard experiments to a whole new level. Let's start this project with the AC arc welder we made in a previous project. It runs on modified parts from a microwave oven, and you can see how I built it in another project video. Now if we power up the reactor and try touching the two carbon rods together, they spark up a blinding arc of electricity that gets impressively hot, impressively fast. The heat of the arc pulls the plasma upward, but if we tilt the electrodes down a bit, we can change the direction of the beam and splash it down into the reactor core. Let's test the power of the arc furnace on this little aluminum muffin we made in a previous project. You can see it's the perfect size for nestling down into the 2 inch chamber. With the lid in place, it's time to insert the carbon electrodes, and when they touch, you can see they start sparking, then stabilize into a steady and continuous electrical arc. Now after only 45 seconds, you can see the rods are white hot and could start a fire. So let's push them through the insulating holes in the lid, then carefully remove it from the furnace. You can see the aluminum is melted and glowing bright orange, but surprisingly enough, the outside is still cool enough that I can pick it up barehanded. Now just for fun, I poured the aluminum into a mold I quickly hacked out with a screwdriver and ended up with a crude casting of my King of Random logo. That's kind of cool. Now you might have noticed this furnace is made from an insulating fire brick, and I chose this material because refractory bricks like these withstand extremely high temperatures. They're lightweight and extremely soft, so it only takes a few minutes to carve out a furnace, and the best part is one $6 brick can make two of them. You'll see how to make these in another project video. Now to see if this thing will handle higher temperature metals, let's clamp an old copper pipe to my bench vise and use a hacksaw to cut it into smaller pieces. The melting point of copper is about 60% higher than aluminum, so I'm really curious to see what happens when we nuke this with plasma. Now I designed the furnace with a little viewing port so we can have a look down inside to see what's happening when it's in operation. Here you can see the arc is holding steady and pointed downward, heating the chamber thousands of degrees within seconds. And if you look closely here, you can see bits of copper liquefying and collapsing under the arc. Alright, it's been just a little over a minute, so let's see what's happened on the inside. Amazingly, it's so hot, it's nearly too bright to look at. But as it starts to cool a bit, you can see clearly that the copper is melted completely. Now I designed the furnace so the viewing port will double as a makeshift pour spout as well. This keeps everything self-contained and makes it easy to pour glowing pools of liquid copper. Now I'm using fire brick to cast my ingots because it's the only material I have that'll handle temperatures this high. Alright, our copper ingots are poured, and at this point, they kind of look like radioactive egg yolks. That's really cool. A couple minutes later, you can see they've blackened over, but they're still incredibly hot. And watch what happens if we touch them with a piece of paper. The copper turns bright and shiny again wherever the paper touches it, but quickly goes black again when the paper moves and the air can get back to oxidize it. I'm super excited this furnace will take down copper. The question now is, what will it do to steel? I used a hacksaw to cut a quarter inch off the end of a steel pipe, and after only 20 seconds in the furnace, you can see the steel has gone incandescent and could easily be hammer forged into a custom ring of power. Let's go one step further. I chopped a steel grounding rod into 2 inch pieces and threw them in the reactor, then fired it up over 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, which in this case is hot enough to make a shower of sparks fly out of the viewport. This is why it's important to have fire and safety equipment nearby and backup plans in case something goes wrong. Now check this out, the power of the plasma is so incredible that it just reduced this grounding rod into a flowing fountain of liquid steel that's so bright it looks like sparking liquid light. How crazy is that? Now to finish up, let's see what would happen if we threw in these three small rocks I found in the backyard. I torched the rocks for three minutes and the electrodes got so hot I could barely hold onto them, but it's worth it for what you're about to see. That's right, you can't see anything because it's so hot right now it's like looking directly into the sun. If we give it a couple of minutes to cool, then look down at the bottom, you suddenly realize you're looking at liquefied rock. I'm not exactly sure, but I think we just cooked up a batch of lava. Well now you know how to use an improvised arc welder and a 6 volt lantern battery to power an experimental arc furnace. With electric fire so hot, it'll melt any metal you can get your hands on, or forge one ring to rule them all. By the way, I tried melting a whole load of copper tubing, then casting it in a mold made from plaster, which apparently releases very flammable gases because it spewed molten metal all around the workshop. Even so, I ended up with an awesome looking copper ingot to add to my metal casting collection. Well that's it for now, if you like this project, perhaps you like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com
Hey guys, I learned a lot while making this project and these experiments have been really gratifying for me because this is the kind of stuff that makes me feel alive. This kind of power opens a whole new world of wonder and creation. And if this were scaled and modified, there really aren't any limits to what could be done. Let me know in the comments how these experiments made you feel. I'd love to hear your thoughts and get your feedback. I'm also really excited to have three million of you now following my random projects and experiments. I'm always working on something new and putting out new videos every five days. So if you haven't already, Please subscribe now to show your support and feel free to check out some of my other projects and videos until I release the next one. Talk to you then. Bye.